In the words of Sebastian Vettel, Okay, here's the task for you. Take a look at these two McLarens. Do you notice anything different about them apart from the obvious change in paint colour and aerodynamic design? Well, I'll give you a hint. There's a lot more of them on the car. Of course, it's sponsors that I'm talking about. For such a historic team, I'm still amazed seeing the lack of sponsors McLaren had on their car between 2014 and 2017. I know they fell further down the grid due to their move to Honda Power in 2015, but as one of the most recognisable manufacturers in the world with huge F1 pedigree, you'd expect loads of businesses to partner with them, yet their liveries look like generic motorsport manager templates. A key reason to this uptake in sponsors over the last couple of years is mainly due to one man, Zach Brown, McLaren's CEO. You often see him in interviews and around the paddock, but do you really know who he is and where he came from? If the answer to either of those questions is no, this video is for you. I'm going to dive a bit deeper into his backstory and explain how he got to where he is today, whilst also giving my opinion on why he's the perfect man to lead McLaren into the next generation of Formula 1. Let's start with the early years. Zach Brown was born on the 7th of November 1971 in Los Angeles, California. He did plenty of racing in his early years in the junior categories, and like almost every professional driver, he started out karting, where between 1986 and 1990 he won 22 races, so he definitely showed enough talent to continue to climb the racing ladder. As with most overseas drivers, he wanted to prove his worth in Europe as he had a dream to race in F1. So in 1991 he moved to the UK, slept on his best mate's living room floor and got a job at Donington Park under the training of driver Richard Dean to do whatever he could in order to gain sponsorship to race. The difficulty in finding sponsors led him to set up his own motorsport marketing agency, JMI, in 1995, but I'll get onto that a bit later. Whilst racing in the junior categories in Europe, he took part in Formula Ford, Formula Vauxhall Lotus and British F3 and competed against famous names such as Jan Magnussen, Kevin's dad, IndyCar champion Dario Franchitti, Christian Horner, yes he had a racing career, and the legend himself, Ricardo Tossa Rosset. He also took part in races across the pond in the Toyota Atlantic Championship, where he raced against 1997 F1 champion Jacques Villeneuve, and in 1995 he did one race at Laguna Seca in the Indy Lights Championship. Unfortunately, Zach wasn't too successful in any of his racing efforts, and he only achieved one win in Formula Ford. And when he realised he was not going to reach F1, he decided to focus on GT racing in 1997, where he was a bit more successful, scoring two class podiums at the 24 hours of Daytona and 12 hours of Sebring. He continued racing in North America until 2001, when he decided to take a break from racing and focus on his business efforts. Zach returned to the track in 2006, and he was a class leader in the Brick Car 24 hour race at Silverstone, whilst he also took numerous wins in the Ferrari Challenge North American series. In 2009, he decided to set up his own racing team called United Autosports with his old mentor, Richard Dean. The outfit has grown massively over the past 11 years, and it's now one of the largest motorsport teams in the UK, competing in many different championships around the world. While some of the drivers that have driven for the team include Lando Norris, Fernando Alonso, Paul de Resta, and Juan Pablo Montoya. They also restore classic race cars, some of which are actually owned by Zach himself as he's an avid car collector, and with these cars they compete in historic championship races. As a part owner of the team and a driver himself, it was only right that Zach took part in many of these races, some of which include the 2010 Spa 24 Hours where he scored a class podium, the 2011 Daytona 24 Hours, and the 2011 Spa 24 Hours where he was partnering XF1 drivers Johnny Herbert and Stefan Johansson. It was in 2012 where Brown's relationship with McLaren started, as United Autosports used McLaren 12Cs as their main cars in the Blank Pan Endurance Series and British GT Championship and Zach achieved one win at Donington Park until he took a step back from racing at the end of 2013 to once again focus on the business side of his life. It was around this time that Zach was being rumoured to replace Bernie Eccleston as the head of F1. This was because of his many contacts in the motorsport industry due to his company Just Marketing International, or JMI as it's often called. He founded the business in 1995 as he needed extra cash to continue racing, and he had discovered he had the perfect skill set for marketing. However, he realised that he wasn't good at finding sponsorship for himself as he wasn't a high profile driver, so he instead had an ambition to bring in big names to more established teams and series in motorsport. His plan worked brilliantly, and some of the brands he's brought to F1 include technology giant LG in 2008 and the Swiss investment bank UBS in 2010. Outside of F1, he conducted one of the biggest deals in NASCAR history with Crown Royal Whiskey, an unthinkable brand to sponsor the series at the time as it had previously banned sponsorship by spirit companies. The success of JMI is plain to see. While Zach personally has been recognised by lots of industry publications, including Promo Magazine's Marketer of the Year and the Sports Business Journal 40 Under 40 Hall of Fame. JMI was acquired by CSM, a division of the London based marketing corporation Chime Communications Limited in 2013 for $76 million, and Zach remained as its CEO until 2016 when he removed his involvement from the company. 
While Zack and his company were getting used to being under new ownership, over at McLaren, things were starting to take a turn for the worse. They had a massive fall from grace in 2013, whilst in 2014 they were a bit more competitive, but they also lost a lot of their sponsors. Then, Honda happened. 2015 and 16 were abysmal years for the team, and the majority shareholders of McLaren attempted to force CEO Ron Dennis to leave before his contract expired as they wanted to modernise the company's work practices. He announced his departure in November 2016, and less than a week later, Zach was named as executive director, a key member of a wider team that would replace him. Whilst the results didn't improve going into 2017 and 18, McLaren as a company had an organisational restructure that would streamline its corporate strategy. Zach was promoted to the CEO of the McLaren Group, making him effectively the leader of the F1 team, but the team principal at the time, Eric Boulier, would still be in charge of its day to day running. Whilst the team wasn't achieving much on track, the missing pieces of the puzzle were starting to be put together behind the scenes, and I think a lot of the credit has to be given to Zach and his connections in the industry. Eric Boulier resigned in July 2018 due to poor results, and Zach decided to simplify the technical leadership team. He brought in Gilles de Ferran as sporting director, and in 2019 he announced Andreas Seidel would be the new team principal after leaving his position at Porsche's LMP1 team. Seidel especially was a massive appointment, as he brought in efficiency and a winning mentality to the team that scored their last podium five years earlier. Another thing Zach was able to bring was sponsors like you saw at the beginning of the video, and McLaren have recently brought in some huge names like Dell, Coca-Cola, Hilton and recently Golf, as well as newer more contemporary brands like Husky Chocolate. This will only help them improve their financial situation which will hopefully see them move further up the grid. After a few difficult years, the future looks bright for McLaren, and Zach with the rest of the senior management team will play a key role in their success. The performances on track in 2020 have been great, with Landon Norris in particular impressing me now he's got to grips with being more aggressive when racing, and I don't see any reason why they can't finish in the top 4 of the Constructors' Championship, especially with Ferrari struggling. 2021 will see more positive changes in the team as Daniel Ricciardo will replace the Ferrari van Carlos Sainz, and I can't wait to see the chemistry between him and Lando. The atmosphere within the team at the moment is so refreshing compared to the Ron Dennis era where it was clinical and cold, and Zach is a key reason to this switch in culture. On the engineering side of things, the McLaren Mercedes partnership will also be resurrected, and I can see the team moving even further up the grid once they have the best engine in the back of the car to match their improved aero package. When taking everything into account, although Zach Brown isn't the only reason McLaren are making progress, I believe he deserves a lot of credit for helping the team turn around their fortunes behind the scenes both culturally and commercially. The company looks like a great place to work which can only be a positive thing and helps everyone perform at their best. It sort of reminds me of what Mercedes are doing since Toto Wolff installed a no blame culture in the team. I've done a video on him if you want to check it out. Zach and Andreas are a great duo that complement each other perfectly and I can see McLaren returning to the top step of the podium once again under their leadership. Well I hope you guys now have a better understanding of who Zach Brown is and where he's came from. I've learned a lot about him when researching for this video, and in my eyes, McLaren and F1 are lucky to have him. Now I want this series to focus on people behind the scenes and on the pit wall, so if there's anyone you guys would like me to focus on next, make sure to let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and if you want to get a reminder when my videos drop, hit that bell icon and follow me on Twitter, links in the description below. Anyway guys, have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.